Hello and welcome to another episode of the Relationship Smart Women podcast. I am your hostess, Nicole Matheson. I'm so happy to be here. It can sometimes logistically be really challenging to actually get this time and space to sit and share my ideas and thoughts with you. It's very exciting when it does happen. How are you going? Hmm, I hope you are well. I hope um, while this year is flying past for most of us that you don't feel too overwhelmed with it. And even if you do, I hope you're being kind to yourself. Um, Today I want to talk about libido and desire. I have so many things to say about libido and desire, so we're just going to have to take it slow and step by step because otherwise it's just going to come pouring out in a wanna and be very confusing for you. So today I'm going to try and hone home in on this one idea, which is that the way you feel about yourself and your body and the way you look has an impact on your libido. Let me ask you this question. How does the way you feel about your body affect your libido and your sexual desire? As you know, um, probably by now, I'm writing a book called The Beauty Load about this heavy load that we carry as women of constant niggling, um, sometimes not so niggling, sometimes very much in our face, sense of not quite enough in the beauty stakes, sense of pressure to always look good and to need to look good in order to be valued in the world. How does this pressure affect our sexuality, our, who we are sexually, how we interact in intimate moments with others and ourselves? I um, When I started uh, this project of this book, which was many years ago, I sent out a survey to my to some of the women in my community and ask them various questions. And one of those questions was, how does the way you look affect your libido? And here's, a, I'm going to read out a couple of the answers. Um, this one's, when I'm overweight and not exercising, I definitely don't feel like sex as much. Another one says, when I feel very unattractive, I do not feel sexy. Another one is, if I feel fat, I just want to be alone. And then, when I feel pretty, I have a higher libido. So on and on the answers went, um, which is not surprising, right? Really, to us women who live with the load, who know the load intimately and know this is actually the truth of it, right? If we feel yucky, gross, icky, overweight, pimply, too flat-chested, too whatever, it's going to affect the way we feel in our body, how sexy we feel, how open we are to having sexual intimacy with a partner. You know, and I, my own special area of focus on my body has always been my flat chest and what happened when I was younger was I used to I used to wear push-up bras to, to try and hide the fact that I had a flat chest. But then if I actually managed to lure uh, a young man in to sexual intimacy with me, I would actually feel anxious when they reached towards my chest because they'd find out my secret that I wasn't actually a B cup, I was an A cup. <laughs> And so someone reaching to my breast has a response of anxiety because of that, because I wired it in that way. And I'm I'm not saying I wired it in that way to take responsibility myself, to, to, to put myself down, but I wired it in that way as a young woman and it has taken and still can have that response in me, but it has taken a lot to unravel. And I 
take some of the responsibility, but the beauty load, the culture is actually taking the full responsibility for that because my need to feel valued and sexy and attractive and therefore sexual was all put on by me, by my experiences in the culture and the conditioning I was um, under the influence of, was put on how I looked and how I looked was lacking according to me, according to the messages I was receiving because of my small breasts. (sighs) So how we think we look to others in relation to how we think we should look in the world relating to this ideal image of beauty is going to really impact how sexy, how sexual, how our sexuality is developed and, yeah, can really have a big impact and maybe one that we are not often considering. Uh, I mean, think about how it feels when you put on a lot of weight. There are studies linking obesity with low sex drive and complete standstill of sexuality. As you can hear from the women in my network, when I'm overweight and not exercising, I don't feel like sex when I'm I'm unattractive. And how much we link our weight how how much weight we carry with being attractive because of the conditioning we have received you know and I'm taken back to the documentary that spurred the writing of this book the beauty load for me really was these women watching a documentary called the sunny side of sex where Sunny Bergman went and interviewed these women in Cuba as they were exiting uh, a gym class And she asked them, are you sexy? And they started gyrating into their bodies and going, hell yeah, we're sexy. This was all in Spanish, so translated, but you could see it. They felt it. They moved. They were embodied in their sexiness. And they were all different shapes and sizes. This was not about needing to be a certain way to be sexy. They were all sexy. And we have to actually acknowledge that in Cuba, where this was filmed, they have not had advertising. It's been a communist country for generations now and they're just not being conditioned to think that they are lacking and to think that their sexiness is related to their beauty. You know, we are exposed to thousands and thousands of images you know, that actually benefit from us feeling like we are not enough, we are not pretty enough, we are not beautiful enough, and that that is what makes us sexy. Sexiness and beauty has really been converged in our minds, like in order to be sexy, we have to look a certain way, which is absolute bollocks, absolute bollocks. But uh, I'm really quite interested in the studies of uh, a lady named Marta Miana. She's a doctor uh, and a researcher and a psychologist at the University of Nevada and the author of a book called Sexual Dysfunction in Women. But she's been studying in particular um, women's arousal and, well, I suppose low libido. But she's found that this is real, she's coined a term called female erotic self-focus, which sounds like masturbation but is not. It's this idea that women need to find themselves attractive, erotic. Women's arousal may depend more on their own erotic relationship with themselves than men do, and then 
their relationship, their erotic relationship with their man, with their person, with their woman, whoever they're making love to. So she's, she's found that sexual excitement is autonomous and in many ways disconnected from their partner rather than contingent on sexual objectification like it is in men, right? So we have grown up and been conditioned to feel sexy if we are objectified by men. This is the male gaze we, I was talking about a lot on uh, my Instagram and in my stories and also on my IGTV, so go check it out. But, um, okay, she's done some interesting studies. So one was if she got men and women to have sex in front of a mirror, she found that the, the women would look more at themselves and the men would look more at their partner. Reading an article in The Conversation by Gary Willardunsky and Erin Hughes, they've found that women experiencing objectification uh, from their partner, and these are people in new relationships or they're engaged or they're cohabitating or they're married or whatever, so a bit of a range, have different experiences of objectification and and overall they've found that even if women enjoy being sexualized being objectified it does not add to their sexual desire that feeling desired is not synonymous with objectification feeling wanted your by your partner is important but feeling like your body is the only thing that matters isn't and that makes sense to us as women. I often hear women say that they need to actually feel the connection beyond the bedroom, beyond their body, in order to feel desire. But let's come back to this idea that we need to find ourselves sexy in order to have a thriving, healthy libido. I think this is momentous. I think it's important. I'm wondering if it resonates with you. If you think about your body and how it feels and how you fuel it and how you move it and how in your head you are or how much in your body you are and how attractive you feel. And how you can feel if you actually really tend to your your looks, your health, your well-being. How you feel when you actually give yourself the space to feel or to dance or to get into your body. How much does that change how sexy you feel? And inversely, conversely, how does it feel when you are stuck in comparison, when you are being critical of whatever's going on with your appearance, your haircut, your unshaved legs, your acne outbreak, your five kilos you put on post-baby, or gosh, if that was me, that was more like 10. But you know what I mean. How does that affect how much you want to be sexy and sexual and in your body and touched and ravished and enjoyed? How much does it affect how you can relax into the vulnerability of opening your body and your experiences and your pleasure to another human? I would say a lot. You know, and there's been a lot of talk about our need to self-pleasure, but I think that really it's vital that you are comfortable pleasuring your body, wiring up the, the pleasure pathways for yourself, allowing yourself to feel your body as an experience of pleasure rather than 
as an object that looks a certain way. I don't know, what do you think? Maybe it's time to really get that jade egg out or that crystal wand or to dance a bit more. And this is actually only ever a question of what feels like the next small step for you, not what all those Instagram embodiment priestesses are doing, but what feels like an available next small step for you to open maybe just a little bit of light on you finding yourself a little bit sexier.